we'll take a look. I got this guitar back. We'll see what kind of shape it's in. I am, I'm assuming that it's not even playable after that long in an uncontrolled environment. Um, so, man, I don't know what to say. Uh, you don't need to say anything. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! So. Wow, that is beautiful! If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. This is one of those channels where you can learn both from my victories and my mistakes. I should have done more of the water-based green filler over top of this mahogany because it is so porous, uh, but I didn't. So I will make up for some of that by doing more coats of paint and then more coats of clear coat and I'll be able to get it nice and smooth like I do want it but it is going to take more work that way. Good morning guys welcome to Let's Build a Guitar. I'm very pleased with the results I'm getting from this Duplicolor. I used the Duplicolor Toyota Pearl on the back. I initially did it with a gray primer underneath and it came out just a little too silver. So I sanded it down a bit and I put on some white primer and then went back over it with the Pearl, uh, Toyota Pearl. The Toyota Pearl is a little bit silver to it anyway. So it looks pretty close to the cap. It's got a little bit of that silver sparkle to it. It looks nice. I really like the color. And then this really seems pretty good too. This is the 1K Duplicolor 1K Clear. Um, I've never used this before. This is my first time using it. At this point, I'm very pleased with the results I'm getting. But where I'm at, and I haven't uh, completed this yet because we still have some orange peel, and I have to take the tape off the front and do the whole thing. I did eight coats of pearl over top of it to get it as bright as I could. And then I did three coats of this 30 minutes after spraying the Toyota Pearl, at, uh, per the bottle, I went ahead and sprayed the clear coat. It has sat for uh, over 48 hours, and I am going to do a very light sanding using 600 grit sandpaper to sand this so that I get the orange peel off. I'm going to use the X-Acto knife and go right along the ridge here of my binding that I've got on there. And then we're going to have to touch that up. I, I know that. We'll have to do some scraping of the binding and all of that there. But I'm going to just go along and score it so that I don't end up peeling paint or anything off on that. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of work to do there yet. That's part of today. Also today, it sounds like Corwin is finally going to be able to get back over here and he is ready to stain. I have no idea what he has decided to stain his guitar. So we're going to do that. So we're going to work on staining Corwin's guitar and then we'll see what else we might be able to come up with on today's episode of Let's Build a Guitar. Thanks for coming and joining in. Please like and subscribe, guys. Appreciate you coming around and watching. Hey, you know, I just want to tell you that, you know, I do some how-to stuff in here. But my videos, just if you are looking for something that is strictly how-to by the book, one, two, three, four, uh, that's not me. This is kind of my life, working with guitars, building guitars, doing that type of stuff. And hopefully along the way, you'll learn a few things and you have to put up with me. Stick around, guys. Only if you want to. Now after having sanded it with 600 grit, scored the whole area that had been painted and clear coated, I'm pleased with the results of it. So now I'm going to use a very sharp little blade and I am going to make a line all the way around right where my binding is so that I don't pull inadvertently 
any of the paint or clear coat off. I know that I'm gonna have some fixing to do as I go around this and have to do a little bit of scraping on the binding. If you go to all the work of doing this, make sure to take the time, be patient, and just, you know, like right now, I've got a Genesis concert on over here that I watch while I'm, well, I listen to. It doesn't have to be frustrating. Just take your time and actually relax. And I think you'll even do a better job if you're relaxed while you're doing it. As I do this, I was thinking maybe I'd take on a quick little side journey and it's kind of a bizarre story in a way. About four years ago, I built a black Prince Cloud style guitar for a gentleman here in town. And two years ago, I went over to his house, knocked on his door, and there was no answer. And actually, it was April 27th, I believe. And I didn't get any answer. He had given me a key to his place at one point that uh, he, he was a little bit older, um, but he had some health issues. And he said, if, if I don't respond or something, come in and check on me. So I did. And I found him lying on the floor and he was almost deceased at that point. I called 911. They came, they brought him to the hospital. And just a short time after that, he passed away. This guitar was hanging on the wall in his apartment. And the apartment is in, a, in an apartment building that he owned. I'm going to be getting that guitar back tonight. The thing is, is it's been sitting in this apartment for two years and it hasn't been heated or cooled. So I really doubt that the guitar is going to even be playable anymore. But let's go find out. I just went to Jeff's apartment and got the guitar off the wall. He had it displayed on the wall with a picture of Prince with the guitar that this one was modeled after. And so I took a picture of all of it together. And then one of the pictures is me with Dave Roussan. And so this guitar has been hanging in his apartment for two years with basically heat turned off and no AC or anything, so no, no humidity controls or anything, no weather guard. So it's been on a wall two years, and it's full of dust and everything. So I grabbed it. I couldn't find the case for it, so I just wrapped it up in this blanket. Quite a story, really, with Jeff. He was a hard guy to get to know. Um, he was actually, if I can just be really upfront, he was one of the most vulgar men I have ever met. But over time, and as we spent time together, I took, to, took him to a lot of doctor's appointments and stuff. He really seemed to change in a lot of ways, and he sure had a lot more joy and smiles and wasn't near as vulgar towards the end. But yeah, I went in and found him lying on the floor one day and called 911, and ambulance came and got him, and he died just a little bit later. And then his son, young guy, 24-year-old Dalton was working his construction job and he had a heart attack on the job site and they couldn't revive him and he passed away. And so basically everything's been sitting in this apartment for two years and so this was the first time that I went in the apartment after finding Jeff on the floor and I just got to be honest, you know, it was, it was kind of surreal. It's kind of a, a strange thing to go in there after two years and have everything pretty much just the way it was when I found him. We'll take a look. I got this guitar back. Um, we'll see <laughs> what kind of shape it's in. I am, I'm assuming that it's not even playable after that long in, in an uncontrolled environment. Um, it is quite dusty. You probably can't see how dusty it is, but oh wow, and I can feel... <laughs> yeah, I can feel sharpness on the frets, which it was not like that at all, but that's the humidity thing. So those frets are going to have to be redressed. All Schaller Chrome Hardware EMGs. That's that really hard to get a hold of Schaller Bridge. That's This one is the Schaller 450, uh, 455. I'll try and make a few adjustments to see if I can get this thing playing as well. Get it cleaned up. Man, it's a mess. It's like got almost like sappy stuff all over the and he was a smoker too so 
Maybe that's what some of that film is and stuff. I'm just going to loosen the truss rod really quick and see if that will make what kind of difference that might make. Uh, but I really don't have a lot of time to work on this much because I've got to get back to work on on Woody Kane's guitar. So I got to do that. And I've got Corwin coming over here in just a little while and we're going to see what kind of stain he wants to do with his guitar. So I think what I'll do is in the real near future we're going to take a whole episode and I'm going to just kind of work on this and see see what kind of shape we can get this back into and what all I might do. Uh, I may even give it a light sanding on the clear coat and give it a new clear coat on top still. Uh, the one thing that I kind of like is that the fretboard definitely has that aged look to it now, which I kind of like. But anyway, let's see what happens if I just loosen this truss rod. Come back next time when we can find out can he do it yeah i think we'll be able to get to play actually i think what i need to do is make an adjustment on the nut down here as well so a few things um yeah i loosened the truss rod that should make a difference uh, i've just got a few things that need to get done here so that we can have this thing ready to go um yeah yeah all right well hey guys do you remember this guy <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Corwin has decided what he's going to do with his stain, and you have decided to... Coat it with black, sand some of it off, and then go over the white just to get the the, cur the curly and the curly maple a bit yep. more defined. So just kind of like what I thought when I started putting all those samples together, that's what he might do. So I thought that's what he wanted, and then he thought maybe he was going to change his yeah. mind for a little bit there. What were you thinking about? Some other... I. Uh... I don't know. I was looking through some pictures and just wondering, is this really what I want? Or maybe I should do another color, but I think the white will work a lot better. Yeah. Do you have another color in mind when you're looking or just? Um, I was thinking black, but then I wasn't sure how the stripes would show up on that. Right. And yep. Yeah. It's true. Yep. They wouldn't quite be the same, would they? Yeah. Or like kind of a tealish coral color like you had on yours. Yeah. But... Yep. Yeah, I think I'm pretty solid on the white. Okay, so thinking through a couple things, we're gonna do this with the black, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna sand it down. Yep. Then we're gonna put white on. Same thing here. Mm -hmm. What about these lines in the middle? If it's possible, I'd like to do those as white as well. White, okay. These, are you gonna leave them as they are, or are you gonna try and make them more black? I want them black, or at least darker. Would um, something like masking tape or anything like that do anything? Would masking tape work, guys? I wonder. Yeah, that stuff, it's just impossible to do. I don't even know why I use tape anymore. I tried doing that not mm. too long ago on a uh, Union Jack guitar that I was doing, yeah. and the, it just, it's just seeps all through. Yeah. It doesn't work at all, so okay. no sense. The best way to do it is actually to use a brush use a brush and what we'll do is we take the brush with a little bit of stain we're mm -hmm. going to drop it down and we're just going to push it right up to the edge very steady hands very careful and actually don't even go all the way to the edge you just kind of go like yep. this and it'll kind of flow in yeah um what what seems to work is that because there's a line here with a little bit of glue in there mm -hmm. it seems to stop it so oh, it doesn't right. go into as long as you're very careful if you touch across the line it will go in to the yes. other wood. So just bring it up yeah. like that is what we'll do. And then this, yeah, we're just gonna like have to touch, 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 yeah. touch, touch. Okay, so we're going to basically avoid sanding the wange, but we are going to 
start doing and it'll it's gonna take more sanding than what you yeah. realize or what you might think it will it gets pretty but, deep in the grains yep in the wood. But you just kind of make your little swirls mm -hmm. and you'll start to see the light coming back and let's see here and what do you think it's been it's been like uh, I mean, since you put that on, maybe, maybe five minutes. Five minutes, seven minutes. So, because it's it's yeah. dry already with the stains. So, and then you just kind of keep going like that and getting yep. it. So, now if you want, you can leave it a little darker on the edge if you want it darker. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want kind of that fading, fading look. Yep. Um, but you just take it off to whatever level that you want, and then we'll do white over top of it. So what we'll do is we'll let it dry completely yep. and then you'll use sandpaper and fix these spots. Yep. You know, where you're to get that line as straight as possible. And then we can go back in with the black and push black up to that line again. Yeah. Uh, All right, this is what we got today, Corwin. Got it stained up, got those white lines in there. They have to dry a little bit. He's gonna to touch it up with some sandpaper and then we'll bring a little bit of black into there again. We're gonna sign off for today. Next time, with Corwin around anyway, we're gonna to have to work on the back with the mahogany. We're gonna do his a little bit differently. Actually, you wanna hand me that color tone right, that right there, yep. Yes. So I use this water-based grain filler on my mahogany, on, my, on the back of mine and I end up really having to do a lot of work after the fact to get all of those pores filled in. And so we're gonna do something different with his. Um, gonna probably just use a Bondo, like an auto body Bondo for the back, fill that in. Or we could use a plastic wood, which actually shrinks and grows with like it acts like wood does with humidity and stuff but i think the bondo would be fine with that too because we're not doing like a big crack or something that you have to worry about the wood moving so instead of using the color tone we'll do that on his and then we're going to paint his black We've got plenty to do here yet so next time come on back and we'll probably do a little work on this we're going to do some more work on that telly and of course the big thing is we're going to be routering out the cavities and beveling that Xeracote X Horizon. It's going to be really special. So we'll catch you next time guys. Keep fighting for joy.